We have a few things to get through today in a new segment that I am hereby calling Woke Wednesdays. I don't know if I'll ever do an episode like this again, but nonetheless, thank you for joining me. It's Over Opinionated with Jasmine Lane. Now, this first story is a couple of days old, so sorry for bringing it up again, but I promise you there is a lot more going into it than just this initial portion. We're also going to be discussing the most hilarious thing that happened on The View that goes hand in hand with what I'm about to talk about right now and just the absolute destruction, very intentional destruction of the culture, lives, sanity, and minds of people living in Western civilization. And there's some very interesting things that you might learn or some new perspectives that are good to consider. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Let's get those numbers up and hopefully save the souls of so many people who are really just so angry, sad, manipulated, and have been so unbelievably lied to by the people who were supposed to protect them and keep them safe and and give them the truth. But what the hell has happened? And there really is no greater example of this than a couple days ago, it was announced that a biological, very good-looking, blonde-haired, blue-eyed woman, Miss Denmark, won the Miss Universe pageant. Something that absolutely shocked many people, which might sound kind of ridiculous. What the hell do you mean a hot blonde woman won Miss Universe. Why is that shocking? That's how the pageant should go. Well, it hasn't actually gone that way in a very long time. I did some Googling and the last time that a blonde haired, blue eyed woman won this pageant was in 2004. So over 20 years ago. Okay, and people on the left have been taking to X and other social media platforms to talk about how unbelievably racist this white woman who's beautiful is for winning the pageant. And there really is something about this that is so much deeper and so unbelievably evil because a story like this, oh cool, you won Miss Universe, great. That should be like a front news headline for a single day. But the left, the intolerant party of tolerance has turned this into something that is so outrageous. Another tweet here saying, Miss Universe crowning an 18 year old white European blonde woman reflects the social climate we are all in so well. Does it? Does it now? Because you guys were so obsessed with race and playing the race card that you in turn turned into the most racist people ever. And that is perfectly summed up with this right here. The amount of racist hate from black women towards the new Miss Universe says everything you need to know about who the real racists in this country are. A blonde woman has not won Miss Universe in over 20 years, yet they still call it white privilege. So effing stupid. And that right there is the problem with victimhood, is it's never, ever enough. If you are trained to be a victim, if that is your goal in life, you will find a way to be a victim in every single situation, which to me, honestly, is just like, I don't respect that at all. I think it is so lazy and weak to be a victim. Life is hard. Life sucks. Life is cruel. Deal with it. Figure it out and move on. And this whole narrative of white privilege is so unbelievably racist in and of itself. Like you're telling white people that they have privilege over you because you're black. How demeaning is that to who you are and your capabilities? Like what? And that actually is perfectly summed up with this clip right here. Um, also, when you start talking about what white people have done to America, it's about what a white person has done. I don't believe in collective punishment. Um, I'll make you responsible for what you did. I'm not gonna hold, hold you responsible for what somebody else did 100 years ago or what somebody else did today. I hold you responsible for your action. You owe me responsible for my action. In the same way that uh, some white people believe the black people are lazy, shiftless, and ignorant and whatnot, that's not me. In the same way that most of y'all believe I'm on, they're on their knees begging and slobbering and asking for reparations, that's not me. I don't believe in collective punishment. I deal with you as an individual. Individual, therefore, White privilege is a lie. I have asked you very simply to show me the white person that has privilege over me. Nobody stood up. Do you think you have privilege over me? Yes. You're crazy. You're insane. 
you have no privilege over me. Let's make this absolutely positively clear. You have no privilege over me, and if you got it, show it to me right now. Divide and conquer, that is something we know all too well. And this isn't just a simple, oh, we really wanted to be tolerant even though we were already tolerant. It turned into something so evil and so convoluted and so intentional that completely disrupted and divided society to a point where you have businesses opting in for things to look good to virtue signal that are destroying their revenue. You have people not getting hired for jobs because they're white. It is literally reverse racism, which apparently doesn't exist. But yes, in fact, you can be racist towards anybody. You, you can. And I would say that there has been nothing more telling of just how unbelievably racist specifically those on the left have become than these statistics. There has been such a mass brainwashing happening in society and it's been happening for almost a full 10 years now. In fact, if you look at this graph right here, this is how many times people in the media used terms like racist, white privilege, black and brown, of color, systemic racism, marginalized, oppression, whiteness, all of these words that have just been shoved down our throats. And when you hear something enough, especially if you are not somebody who's going to do research yourself, you do start to influence culture and you change the culture around you. And look at how much these words and words have a lot of meaning and they really matter increased in such a short period of time. Why is it that we went so many years without that? Back in 2015, I'll put that as maybe a meeting point of when all of this really started to take off. How is it that as society, the culture wars were not something that anybody paid attention to or talked about up until 2015, roughly? Why is that? And why do you think they did that? Doesn't that seem a little weird to you? I mean, if we had these problems throughout history, would we not be talking about them always? What happened in 2015, roughly, that caused everything to spiral out of control? Well, I can give you one insight, and that would be mass psychosis. That was 100% propped up by the mainstream media. And we hear it all the time. You know, people who oppose DEI, which is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of in my life, you're racist. If you don't support somebody only getting a job because of their race, you're racist. If you don't support people in college getting admitted into very prestigious institutions, despite not having the grades to qualify, going to such an elite, prestigious post-secondary school, and the only reason why they got into that school was because of their skin color, you're racist. If you're against having open borders, you're racist. So yes, in fact, having a blonde hair, blue-eyed Miss Universe for the first time in 20 years is indeed something to celebrate because maybe we are one step closer to not having everything be about the color of your skin and being told that you are less than because of the color of your skin. How people have bought into that is just beyond me. To have white people saying that I'm taking up space for what? Because you're existing? Do you have any, have you ever owned a slave? No. Do you know anybody who has? No. Hmm, weird. I wonder what space you're taking up and what wrongdoings you did. Right, you didn't do any. What happened instead is, as Michael Schellenberger describes, is we have undergone over 10 years of extreme psychopathic gaslighting. There is no evidence or data to show that at any point in time, the West became more racist in the last 20 plus years. None. Nope, none at all. And you know what's been very interesting? Well, they've had us so busy here focusing on the culture wars, the ists and phobes, and fighting for something, a cause that literally does not even exist, but you're making it exist by taking such a stance on something that you clearly are very uneducated about, is that we have had politicians doing some things that are very, uh, very interesting and also historically accurate as well. Authoritarianism. They have been creating these insane economies where there is mass debt, total devastation economically, and uh, also 
They have made everything political. They have turned everybody against each other. So now on top of being broke, you also hate everybody who is around you because you've been so brainwashed into thinking that they are against you. And all of those things are absolutely core characteristics of a totalitarian government. It's one of the first things you do is divide your public. And you are the hero who is there to offer them help. Even though you are the one who created all of this chaos to begin with. And there has been one TV show in particular that honestly I would say is the most racist TV show I've ever seen in my life. The things that they say about people is truly horrific. Calling white women uneducated. They always classify every single story first with the race of the person who they're talking about. And they have no shame whatsoever in completely lying about and destroying the reputation and characteristics of white people. This is my favorite. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I I'm going to tell you before I say it that it enraged me. There is a definite anti-white feeling in the country right now. Oh, please. Yeah, that's what he said. You know, sir. No. Sir. Yeah, sir. <laughs> Nobody in your family was hung. Nobody in your family was chased because of the color of their skin. How dare you? There's no anti-white issue here. You are perpetrating anti-humanist issues here. I don't know if you grew up the same way that I did, but from a very young age, I realized that a skin color is quite literally the least important thing about you. We all have the same brain. We all have the same capabilities. So why now in 2024, you have multimillionaires like the hosts on The View telling you how you're not privileged, how somebody else is privileged, how whites are bad and blacks are good. And everything that's ever happened is due to the problem of the white people, which is just hilarious, given the fact that there's, oh, I don't know, almost no white people on their show ever. Yet these are some of the wealthiest individuals in America. Are you kidding me? And boy, oh boy, was this ever something enjoyable. So on The View, they very regularly will call out, take down, destroy, stomp on, defenestrate anybody at all who they don't agree with. Nine times out of 10, just kidding, 10 times out of 10, it is a white person. And uh, this happened yesterday that was just so iconic, where Sonny Hostin had to issue a legal notice after trying, like she would have successfully done pre-Trump, to defenestrate Matt Gates. How could you nominate someone with allegations of child trafficking across, the, or trafficking across state lines and having sex with a 17-year-old? My understanding, further on in the interview, they discussed the fact that once he finds out that she's 17, he stops having sex with her. Hey, Sonny, you have a legal note. I do have a legal note. Thank you, Whoopi. <laughs> Matt Gates has long denied all allegations, calling the claims, quote, invented, and saying in a statement to ABC News that this false smear following a three-year criminal investigation should be viewed with great skepticism, that DOJ investigation was closed with no charges being brought. We'll be right back. And let's not forget that the allegations Gates is under are years old. Do you really think that if they were true and there was evidence to back them up, that it would take them three years to convict him. Do you really believe that? And surely just because a charge is not brought forward, a conviction is not made, does not mean innocence. That's not what I'm saying here at all. I just want you to really pay attention to the difference in situations and how people talk about this to demoralize and destroy the reputation of somebody who they do not like. So everything about this at the very least is just something to consider about the rage that the media primarily and our governments as well but but you know the media kind of orchestrates what the government wants or where they're leaning in many cases and it is certainly something to compare and think about the way that they discuss these things which are not proven to be true yet 
I'm Jasmine Lane. Thank you for watching another episode of Over Opinionated. I don't know, did you like Woke Wednesdays? Maybe I'll bring it back. <laughs> Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you liked this content and wanna see more of it. You can also like the video and uh, comment your thoughts down below. I say let's dismantle the hate. And what you saw in this city, in this election, when you saw a shift in the city becoming, the state becoming redder, is because we stopped talking about working class people issues. When, when mom and pops are afraid, I can't pay my college tuition, uh, the, the rent is too damn high, um, health care is too expensive. We stopped talking to everyday New Yorkers and Americans. When I'm in the street talking to them, they're not asking me, Eric, tell me about uh, fascism. They're talking about finance. They're not talking about Hitler. They're talking about housing. We need to talk to everyday working class people. And we stopped doing that. And those are the issues that they are afraid of. They're afraid of the future of their children.